Surprise, everybody! Here is a surprise live Hex Bowl tutorial. Also chiming in with Jeff, he's at Enseca at the GR Pottery Forms booth. And we have a bunch of our ClayShare members, our ClayShare family there with him watching. So a big hi to everybody at Enseca. If you're watching this, I mean, folks might be watching at Enseca on their phones or tablets, right? And I've got Jeff over here, so you're going to see me looking this way a little bit. But I'm going to do a bowl, a hex bowl, really, really quick and easy for everybody. So are you good, Jeff? Are you having a good time at Enseca? Yeah. I see all the folks there. Awesome. Wow. Uh, so really telling, good. Uh, so Jeff's telling me 5,500 people. Wow. She's, she's you live got his on audio. Play share oh, now. sorry. Uh, yeah. We've got we've got your audio on on ClayShare, so all right. we can hear you on ClayShare. We can't good, see good. you, but we can hear you. Okay, good. All That's right. Really good. Yeah. So you said fifty five hundred people, and yep. I just heard that one of our ClayShare members, yeah, Stacy, Stacey Quest, won a kiln. She won the kiln, Stacey the grand Quest prize. She's doing a happy dance. So <laughs> this year, oh yeah, she can't I, see it. I, I can't see, see her doing the happy dance. I could, I could. They, I, I, uh, I saw her. Everybody at home can't see her, but I could see her. Oh good, yeah. <laughs> so this year we did a kiln at Clayshare Con. One of our our Clayshare members won, and Stacy, one of our Clayshare members, won a kiln. So two Clayshare members won yeah. kilns this year. That's kind of awesome. Oh. So I'm gonna make this this bowl, Jeff. This little guy right here. This one's glazed and ready to go in. Um, I'll put it up to the camera. This bowl. So I've got to fire it. But um, I'm going to do that later. Maybe today. We'll see. Um, I'm going to use your hex stacks, Jeff. Hex stacks. All right. Because I love yeah. these. And there's this This is the cutie. And you know what? I, I know the cuties don't usually uh, flow with the others, but the hex cutie does. Yeah. In the stack. Actually, they all do. They all should. Uh, yeah. Do the they? round and um, yeah, the round and spherical square should as well. They yeah. do all flow. Okay. Yeah. The round yeah. and circle square. Okay. It just um, becomes a I little have, tippy. Yeah, it gets tiny. But but you know, for like salsa or a dip or something, that oh, works yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't have the official our pottery form Marrakesh templates because both jeff and i've been insanely busy but i have my version of it but you can get them from jeff jeff you still have some right in stock i have a couple left they gone? Yeah. so uh the you may have to special the request them uh we may don't we don't probably don't have them got a live couple left, but, so but yeah special request, <laughs> special request. you, you have got to an email us, sarah request so i'm gonna okay email jeff so i I've got a slab of clay I rolled out earlier. This is B mix. You can see right here. And I'm gonna yeah. for the for the folks there here that you guys can see. Can you see that? So the usual when I make a bowl out. And the trick with this that I want to show you all is because I know Jeff, when you use the rim templates, you put the rim template on first. And then you stack your forms on top, but we're doing it kind of backwards because we're going to cut our shape out and then drape it over the form. Yes, yeah, so there's, you know, multiple ways. Absolutely, absolutely. So if I'm working on the wheel, when I'm using your wall or any of your forms with a rim template, I like to do it the way you put on first, and then you stack your forms on top. And then top. you stack your forms but on top. But we're doing top. it kind of backwards. But we're doing it because we're going to cut our shape out. Absolutely, and absolutely. Shape so if I'm working on the wheel, yeah, so there's you when know, I'm using ways, your you know, wall or any ways. of your forms with a rim template, I like to do it the way you put on first, and then you stack your forms absolutely, on top. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so if I'm working on the wheel, so if I'm working on when I'm using absolutely, absolutely. So if I'm working on the wheel, so there's a template. I like to do it, and there should be video there on the ClayShare site, so they'll have to go there to watch.
Ah, no. Ah. Bummer. I can't keep his audio in because it's moving. All right. So I'm just going to roll to make it. Oh, Drew from Clayscapes is there too. How exciting. So I'm going to roll the rolling pin in just by walking it across. And I'm using the 12, what size? The 11 inch Marrakesh rim template. And we're going to go ahead and just cut it out. So <laughs> yeah, I like to do, so oftentimes I don't like giant plates. I like smaller plates. Uh, so for me, I like to use the like luncheon plate size. So the usually around the nine and a half inch size rim template, you know, that works with the eight inch form is the one I go for because after it shrinks, it's perfect. But, you know, a lot of folks... They want to make big plates, or some people even like to go smaller. We're going to use the one that works with your nine and a half inch form, which is perfect for a dinner plate size. Not a huge plate, but like a nice, reasonable size plate. And I'm going to stack some hex forms. So we're going to make a stacked bowl with this. And I have stacked three forms before without having any issues. I haven't tried four. But I think that might be next. I don't know, Jeff, have you stacked four forms? I, I can't have his audio in here. So, so Jeff says, yeah, he stacked four, but it gets a little difficult with the clay getting wrinkly. It does make sense. All right, so once you have your template cut out, I'm going to use the six and a half and the eight inch hex forms. And we're going to use water to help bond them to each other. So it's hydro adhesion. We're getting all math, all, all science here. And we're just going to line them up. And I know a lot of people will comment about getting lines in your forms, but you won't get lines with stacked forms if you don't press too hard. So I think Jeff finds that as well. So the fabulous thing about the Marrakesh rim template is it has the points on it that line up perfectly with the points on the hex forms. So you could use it for a circle. You can use it for the spherical squares. You can do it with your spherical triangles that, that you have, Jeff. You can do it with the hexes because you got six points, and it's perfect. So you just line up your points. So for the people out there have a hard time getting their form centered when they do it this way, you know, they tell me when they do the draping, this works well because you just line up your points. And once you get them lined up, you just eye the spacing and then we're going to flip it over. I'm just going to grab a couple little form little uh what do you these are spacers these guys right here so we use those and then we'll just press it down right so jeff's jeff's telling me because i don't know if everybody can hear, these folds that happen here, when you go taller, when you stack more forms, they get bigger. So you kind of have to embrace it and make more of a um, free form shape, right? So those of you who are Clayshire members, if you watch my hand-built jellyfish bowl, it's all free form, but you could use that, the, the skills you learn in that class, to make taller stacks. Right? So you could learn how to make it a little more freeform. All right. So the thing you want to make sure is you want to pull these out. You don't want these to wrap under your stacked forms as they dry. And do we have time for me to put feet on this? What do you guys think? We got time? Jeff says we've got 10 minutes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pull up gently. I'm not pressing really in. I'm just gently pulling up, and that's going to get that shape, that hex shape. 
and also give me a nice sharp edge here for those hex points. And then I've got those of you who are at Inseca, Jeff, tell them if they haven't gone to the Mud Tools booth, they should because they need to get an L12 serrated rib. This is like my favorite serrated rib that Cheryl Mud Tools sells. And I like it because it has, well, folks, after this, go, go run over there and say, Jess said, even if you aren't going to buy one, just tell them I said <laughs> so they know. Uh -uh. <laughs> All right, so I'm going <laughs> to. The L12. It's the, 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 the L tell. <laughs> so they're doing it right now. All right, so we just used the foot maker from, that you can make yourself or buy one from Jeff. I have a tutorial on how to make one, but Jeff sells them. So although I do tell people to watch that tutorial because you get to see me use power tools. I'm not sure if it's a good thing or not. All right, I'm going to slip and score again. And I'm going to put the rest of the foot on. Where? So if, you, if you're making your foot rings and they aren't quite long enough, you just overlap them like I just did. Do a bevel cut and then cut through both pieces. Slip and score them again and join them. And when you smooth it out, there. All right, we're almost done, believe it or not. The bowl, so I made a bigger one earlier, and I'm going to show that as the flipping out one. And I made the bigger one about three hours ago. So when you make these, you need to either leave them out uncovered, depending on your humidity level. For me in my studio with the heat running, it's about three hours. In the summertime, when, when heat is not running and it's really humid, it's overnight. So my production time is, is much faster in the winter with the heat because I have less humidity. So those of you who are out west or live in climates that are less humid, you know, your pieces are going to dry much faster. But if you live in a climate that is humid, then it's going to take you overnight. All right, so I'm just stamping it, smoothing this out. To make sure it's nice and level, we're just going to take a wear board and tap, tap, tap. And that's it. And then you let it sit. Oh, shall I show this amazing wear board? This is from GR Pottery Forms. Right here, this is the wah board. It's the wah board. That's right. I this. So I like the other boards you do too. I have, I have one down here that Jeff does. These are great, but I... This is my fave, these right here. I go to them all the time. All right, so now this has to sit up and dry for a few hours, like three, if I leave it uncovered. If I cover it, I'll come out and flip it out tomorrow. Ma and then the magic of planning ahead, I always say, ta-da, it's bigger. Got a bigger one here, and I'm just gonna, whoa, we're going to flip it over. And again, like I said, I made this one about three hours ago. So we're going to pull one form out and the other form. I'll just grab that out of there. And there we have this gorgeous large bowl. Show it to the, to the folks at Inseca. They can't see, can they, Jeff? But it happened. So the only finishing work I do on these is I'll take a sponge and I will just smooth the edges gently and then I run my finger back over it. If you're using a rim template that has what's called V cuts, which is where you cut inward at a V, or you make a V or a sharp angle, you're going to want to take your rib at this point and very gently smooth those V cut areas out and compress them and that'll prevent that that cut area becoming a crack and traveling down your rim. So I did a little discussion on cracking in pottery and how to prevent it and that was one of the ones we talked about is their rim cracks and it's a V crack 
and they like to travel. So there we have it. A uh, hex bowl, you can make a whole bunch of different sizes and stack them in each other and nest them and all that. So, and all from Encica. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for this quick little tutorial and visit. I'm going to go chat with Jeff. Uh, but ClayShare folks, thank you. I'll see everybody on ClayShare Monday morning for Good Morning ClayShare. And uh, I'm going to go chat with Jeff now at Enseca. And all my ClayShare family that's at Enseca, hi, I'm sorry I'm missing you, but I will be there next year. So 2024 